Joey, uh, you're in Canada now. You've been hiking in Canada now. It's time you sounded a little more Canadian. Okay. So let's just say that Canadian. Canadian. Good, not bad. Gendarme. <laughs> that hey, that's terrible. pretty good. That terrible. And then the last thing you need to know is if you're going to go to the bathroom in the woods, you know, number two. You went to see a man about the horse. Um, no. You went to see a man about a horse. No, what are you going to say if you're going to do it? I go. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go see a man about a horse. Yes! I haven't had to go see a man about a horse in five days. That's too much it's information. It's kind of got me a little nervous. <laughs>
Man, we're getting spoiled now. Boys, don't get used to this, okay? This is not typical of the north boundary. But we'll take it tonight. Little Creek District Headquarters. Beautiful. Look at that view. Wardens always get the best views. I say it in every video, but it's so true. Been about three weeks since my last trip. <clears throat> or more. The boys have been hiking all summer. Just finished some stuff, so I'm bringing up the rear. <laughs> oh, a little tired now. 15K. We didn't start till 4 o'clock. And we'll probably get to camp out at 8. A lot of car shuttling to do and all that kind of stuff, so no big deal, but uh, just getting ready to call it a day, that's for sure. Uh, not much longer now. We just passed the horse camp. Hiker camp's right here. Hello, little grouse. Oh, hello, sir. That male grouse doesn't want us anywhere around his female. Little shot of camp. We've set up over here, kind of tucked out of the way. That's me, Joey's over there. Brian uses this really amazing uh, tarp. I'm not gonna show you tonight because it's getting dark, but uh, we're out here for a while, so I'll, I'll get to it. We were, I was surprised to find uh, that there's bear hangs here at Willow Creek. Your typical, uh, you know, cable and, and uh, pulley system. So that was kind of cool. Another gentleman here with us tonight, <clears throat> and uh, a little fire going over here, getting some food hydrated. And I'll be honest with you, by the time I eat dinner, I'm probably going to get uh, get horizontal. So, anyway, nice spot. Mosquitoes have died down now that it's a little cooler. And uh, we're just going to have some nice dinner, and I'll wrap it up in a bit. Things like bread, pasta, yeah. chips. <laughs> Well, that's a wrap on day one, uh, 15 kilometers to get here on the North Boundary Trail from the uh, Rock Creek access, and um, 13 tomorrow to Blue Creek. And it'd uh, be interesting to get to Blue Creek because uh, just to see, you know, what the water levels are like. A really good first day with these guys. Great guys. So glad they're out here uh, hiking with me. It's uh, it's just great to be on the North Boundary Trail, and it's great to be out here uh, with them. So I will say with a late start, though, and it's almost 11 o'clock, I'm, uh, I'm sleepy. So I'm, I'm going to go to bed and I'll see you in the morning. Morning, day two on the North Boundary and I uh, made a little error last night. Um, our next campsite's actually scheduled to be Wellborn, which is the 13-ish kilometers, uh, not Blue Creek, which would be uh, like double that. So uh, I don't know, I was pretty delirious last night and uh, just kind of skipped a campsite. So our plan is to go to Wellborn and see how we feel and and kind of take it from there. Um, a little overcast this morning, guys are packing up. I've got the coffee already going and uh, hoping the sun peaks out a little later to dry some stuff off and kind of get a little warmed up. A little bit of a chilly night, but uh, good sleep. Anyway, just thought I'd better correct that. We're off to, uh, off to Wellborn. One last shot of Willow Creek. Heck of a beaver dam up there it looks like. Probably see the lodge up in there somewhere. Maybe we'll catch it on the way out. Horse camp across Willow Creek. And uh, gorgeous morning. We're just getting ready to head out now. And uh, we're obviously heading that way. Let me show you here. There's the sign and we are going to Wellborn. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking about Blue Creek. I just guess I was thinking about that Ford. Underway, right into a meadow. Joey's behind me. How's it going, Joey? It's awesome. Yeah. Hard to beat. Well, that's a beautiful bridge. Is this our junction, Joey? Yeah. 
All right. Six kilometers to Wellburn. That where we're going? Yeah. Oh. But according to what it said back there, there's no way. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I guess we'll find out. But look at that beautiful bridge. Yeah, that is a bridge. Isn't it? Wow. Coming up to a pretty major intersection here. You're going to stay left. Showing Wellborn as four. Uh, Blue Creek is 17. It's be too much for us today. Willow Creek 10. And then of course you can go to Glacier and Little Heaven straight ahead. But when you come down this way, you see the boys walking here. Uh, don't go that way. Just come down here. And kind of go straight ahead. A little bit of bear left, but straight ahead. I'm just waiting here because Brian's filming Joey cross. And I think he asked me to wait so he can film me cross. I'm all good? All right. So I'm going to film them, filming me cross the bridge. <laughs> so what you do when you get three YouTubers together, three backpackers who, who put on YouTube. <laughs> what? I said, uh, someone like Joy chooses to just wait across the street. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, uh, you are indeed a normal person. Take the bridge, baby. It's got a bounce to it. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind getting my feet wet, but if I can. Well, if you can avoid it, why not? Yeah, Absolutely. That's a big milestone for us, the Snake Indian River. I've seen this on maps for a few years now, and uh, it's a lot nicer to see in person. This is spectacular. Really amazing. We all just had a nice break, a little snack. We were less than a couple of kilometers from Wellborn. And uh, gonna come to the junction, a little spur trail to Wellborn Falls. And of course, if that's uh, open and passable, we're gonna go down there and take another little break. Cause then it's only probably another kilometer to camp. It's reasonable. Here's the junction, down to Wellborn Falls. Just up this way, 475 meters, just under half a kilometer. Dropped our packs at the top of this hill, making our way down to have a view of Wellborn Falls. You know, we missed Snake Indian because we uh, didn't feel like walking the fire road. And uh, wow. <laughs> Woohoo! Joey's going up there and try to find a better shot. Yeah, man. Yeah. I'll see. All right, I'm gonna see if I can pick my way up there and get you guys uh, get you a shot here. Woohoo! Indeed. This is why Joey's channel is, uh, you know. <laughs> Quite a bit different than our little channel. I mean, look at their look at the risk this guy's taking to get out there and get a shot for uh, for his viewers. Amazing. That was worth the stop. Wow. What do you think, guys? Worth the stop? Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice falls. Woo. Look at that. This is pretty. It sure is. And then I guess Joey, just down around that corner is probably where the falls are. That way. Yeah, that's a beauty. Wow. Almost there. Almost there. Should we steal some firewood? I think we can come back 300 meters. Yeah, but bring this guy. <laughs> How are you going to cut that? Uh, he said I was going to cut it. Little shot of camp. We're all set up. We've uh, ducked in for a while out of some rain showers. Pretty typical out here, unsettled weather. Obviously eating area, we've got some food under the tree to stay dry. We've decided to set ourselves up over here. Um, Brian went looking for the bear hang and uh, we're using, Joey and I are using Ursax, so we're not really concerned about that. But um, 
Brian couldn't find it necessarily, so he uh, he's using his own method, which I've mentioned before. It's actually excellent, uh, excellent watching on his channel. Privy's back this way. It's uh, your typical pole in a hole. And there's the bear hang. <laughs> I gotta go tell Brian he didn't look very far. Uh, yeah, there's a bear hang right there. Bring your own rope. So we're gonna get a fire started here and uh, warm up a little bit. Rain always brings a little cooler temperatures, so one last look at our view from the campfire area for this evening. Beautiful, really beautiful. And <laughs> somebody's brought out um, two little stools to sit here. And uh, I mean, if you're trying to wash up or anything like that, do some dishes, just sit out here. There's a fire, I think we stoked the fire enough. I didn't know what you meant by that. It's Not a bad way to end day two, I'll tell you that. Holy mackerel, what a day. Probably did, uh, what did we do? 12.73 kilometers, not 14, which was a lovely, lovely surprise. And uh, tomorrow we're only gonna do 11 and a half-ish to, um, to Blue Creek, because that's a big ford, and we're gonna try to get in early, and it's supposed to be sunny tomorrow, I mean, knock wood. And um, we'll just charge some stuff. We'll get some wet things we have to dry. And, we'll, and then we're going to plot our moves and start maybe looking at putting a couple days together here and there to set ourselves up uh, for the probably the tougher part of the trail. But just a gorgeous night. Guys are over there, fire going. Uh, Joey and Brian are chatting about different stuff. It's just been a great trip so far. And uh, those waterfalls today were absolutely spectacular, as is this view. My goodness me. So. Uh, we're going to wrap things up here for the night and, um, you know, just get a little extra rest after a long day yesterday and I'll see you in the morning. Gorgeous view for the start of day three and almost a bluebird. Look at that. We'll call it that. That's beautiful. We need a sunny day to do some drying and for me to do a little charging and that sort of thing. But just look at that view. Woohoo! Gorgeous. Good sleep last night. Got to bed late. We stayed up around the fire and chatted and uh, but had a lot of fun. And now we're up and at them and we've got a short day, so that's good. And that sets us up for the uh, tougher part of the hike. Probably down near freezing last night, I'd say. But um, yeah, what, 11 and a half kilometers today to uh, Blue Creek? And then the big Ford there uh, tomorrow, and then onward. So uh, just over here, boiling some water for coffee. Joey's up getting the stuff going. Brian's over there packing up. And a little breakfast and on the trail. I didn't want I didn't want to assume that you've seen our South Boundary Trail video, Evelyn and I, where I talked about the pole and the hole toilets. So I thought I'd show you one because I'll probably, if I give you the campsite tours as we go along, this is probably what we're going to have and I have to show you every single one. But but there it is, a pole and a hole. Uh, hold up here. <laughs> are you, oh, you're filming too? <laughs> I was filming, yeah. I am filming. Are you filming? Where are you filming each I'm other? I'm filming a guy filming me. <laughs> and there's another guy with a camera. Is he filming too? <laughs> oh, this is kind of weird. Yeah, dueling cameras. <laughs> Quite a climb this morning, actually. It's still slow and steady, but uh, <laughs> a little bit of a warm up in the woods now, but that's a heck of a view. Almost time for our first break, and uh, just a gorgeous day. Look at that. Brian just said we weren't expecting this, and we weren't. Wow, we just walked down into this beauty. Look at that.
Hello, sweetie. Where's your boyfriend? Hopefully not nearby. She can't smell us because we're downwind. <laughs> well, let's see what happens. I just hope her boyfriend's not around. Me too, there she goes. <laughs> All right, so if you remember uh, at the end of our my last video with Evie when we were on the South Boundary, we gave a shout out to Chuck for lending uh, his Orsac to Evelyn uh, to do the South Boundary Trail. Uh, Chuck the Mauler. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to give another shout out to Chuck. <laughs> Use your bag, Chuck. Thank Joey's you. using your bag. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I, you know what? I only brought this because I have another one. Yeah. That I could have brought instead. But this one was just too white. Chuck. Why not use Chuck's? I don't know why you don't stain this thing when you <laughs> use it. So I'm giving you some new stains just to break it in for you and give it a little bit better color. Yeah. So thanks, buddy. Yeah, and I'll yeah. uh, get this back to you. You're a good friend, Joey. See you. Yeah, you're a good friend for Chuck. That's good. Nice of you to do that for him. That's a, it's actually pretty cool. Uh, what was that? We, we, I was doing a separate trip with my friend Chuck and uh, my friend Paul and Aaron. And we were at the, what is it? The, the Nigel Nigel Pastoral. Trailhead, yeah. And you showed, you happened to just show up. I know. I didn't even like, no, I forgot that you told me you were going to be in the area and you were yeah. dropping the car from yeah. the end of the south boundary. Yeah. You just happened to just yell out my name and I rec I just heard your voice and I was like, oh, I know that voice from somewhere. Oh my gosh. That was and pretty crazy. That like, was crazy. Like we a 10 minute window, right? We randomly ran into yeah. uh, Stuart and his daughter and then uh, Chuck Wolf. Let's do it. Borrow this. And yeah. Atta boy, Chuck. And hey, now it's on the now it's on the north and boundary now it's trail. In the hands of the absolutely worst person to have it, because <laughs> it's not going to be returned in the same shape or color. It's still looking pretty white, Joey. I gotta say, really. So anyway, thank it's you, all, Chuck. It's only day three. <laughs> so. Yes. Little junction here to go into the warden's cabin, which is here. You guys want to go see this or you want to keep going? Yeah, let's go see it. All right, let's go see it. Blue Creek headquarters. Look at this view. I'm not going to say it because I always say it, but I'm going to flash on the screen what I always say. Look at this. Wow. Guys are coming in to take a look as well. Yeah, Blue Creek Warden's Cabin, not too far to camp now. First bear signs of the entire hike. I started to pick up on something a little while back and I asked Joey, I said, yeah, it looks like a paw to me and we, it wasn't a full print, but uh, I mean, you can see deer or elk coming through here, hikers, horses, but yeah, bear pin, bear paws. Mount Robson and Upper Blue Creek go right. Blue Creek campsite across the bridge and to the right. So let's go see if that's correct. Coming into Blue Creek. Horse and hiker camp. Hopefully uh, not too poopy. So we can find places to set up a tent. North boundary goes right, down this way, all right, and uh, we've come from Wellborn, so boys are coming down the trail, we're going to get set up and then I'll show you around. We've been hard at work setting up, Joey's here, I'm there, Brian er, wanted nothing to do with us this evening, so he's uh, way over there. <laughs> Showed you this earlier. Privy's over there and it's one of the green ones because this is a horse camp and a bigger fire ring as usual. And uh, the bear pole is back in there. The cool thing about this uh, water is just right over there beyond those fallen trees. It's a nice clear, uh, swift moving little uh, creek. So it's quite beautiful. So this is, uh, well, this is Blue Creek. 
We're going to go up and have a look at the uh, at the river crossing tonight, a little uh, reconnaissance, and then uh, hopefully, if we have time, I'm just going to talk a little bit about our trip planning. Joey and I have come out to do some reconnaissance uh, just on this whole Blue Creek crossing, which is actually right here, nothing. Sit up to your knees? Yeah, I mean, really nothing. Um, but back this way, there's a sign that says footbridge and to go a whole different direction. But I'm using my GPS and I'm like, no, the North Boundary Trail doesn't go that way. It goes this way. So uh, I'm glad we did this. But now I'm curious to see what's up there. It's a bit nippy, huh? Not too bad. Yeah. Not All right. We got this. Well, I promised a little trip planning uh, information, and uh, I guess the big question is why did we start at uh, Rock Lake and not Celestine Lake? And truthfully, we just chatted about it as a group and didn't want to do the old fire road walking. It's uh, 30 kilometers almost of. Uh, pine trees <laughs> we just didn't want to do it and the, I mean the downside to that is you miss Snake Indian Falls but we did see Wellborn Falls and we'll just keep Celestine Lake and and uh, Snake Indian Falls for another time so now we're at Blue Creek and Joey and I just went up and scouted the uh, crossing here and it I mean Joey crossed it and came back and I crossed it halfway and came back and uh, really nothing to worry about the only other creek crossings we have to worry about later uh, our gendarme and Carcajou, and that'll be in a, in a number of days. And if this is any indication of the water levels, we're, we're going to be just fine. I dug out the map, and it was interesting because last year, Evelyn and Olivia and I were supposed to do this trail, and the water levels were not low like they are tonight. They were wickedly high. And so I dug out the map, and wouldn't you know it, there's Evelyn's marks. I made Evelyn plan the trip. She wanted to do the North Boundary, and I made her plan the entire trip and she put sticky notes on the map to remind her what the Canadian Rockies Trail Guide said. And it's really good that she did because I left my Canadian Rockies Trail Guide <laughs> laminated pages in the car. So uh, we know tomorrow now a 15 kilometer day is going to be very, very scenic. And uh, always nice when you have a longer day um, to have something more to look at. And no, 15 kilometers is not a, a typically long day, but we've just decided to, you know, almost hit every campsite and enjoy our time out here and, and spread the trip out. Well, that's the end of day three, 12 kilometers on the nose, which uh, included a lot of pine forests, a really beautiful lake with a rock slide that we kind of didn't expect to see, uh, an elk, she looked at me for a very long time. <laughs> and then Joey and I were able to get to camp and uh, go over and check out the crossing of Blue Creek and it looks like it's going to be not really anything to be concerned about tomorrow. So um, 15 kilometers tomorrow actually to oatmeal and like I said we're just kind of taking our time along the way. Want to see as much as we can and just kind of spread out uh, this great trip here on the North Boundary Trail. So time for a little campfire and I'll see you in the morning. Morning. Day four. Pretty good sleep last night here at Blue Creek. Uh, last night I was wrong again when I said we, where we were going today. Uh, we're not going to oatmeal, we're actually just going to three slides. So uh, good thing I'm having granola this morning because uh, it wouldn't be nice to have granola before heading to oatmeal. So not a bad sleep. I think I picked up a little bit of a cold. Don't know how, but it just kind of feels that way. So, you know, no big deal, but uh, a little coffee always helps that, so. On our way from Blue Creek Camp to Blue Creek. And it's a chilly morning for a Ford. A little bit of sunshine would have been a lovely thing, but we'll have to do it without it. Small little stream to cross that used to have a bridge. When you come up out of that little stream, you're gonna see a sign that tells you to go right to a footbridge. That fur bridge is gone. And that's now where the horses cross, I think. So bear left. Don't go toward the bridge. Bear left. And you come down this little side trail where you can cross Blue Creek. That's where I showed you last night. But don't get confused. If you're doing the north boundary and you come up out of that little creek, do not go where it says to go to the footbridge because there's no footbridge there. Same thing when you get here. Looks like you go that way, but you don't. Continue on this way.
And then finally, when you get here, go down this way. Don't go that way. Bare left, right here, with the three bumps on the tree. And we'll cross Blue Creek down here in a sec. Good morning, beautiful. Water is very calm this morning. Just be a little bit chilly. So I'm gonna go across and dry my feet off and put my boots on and I'll uh, show you a little bit of the boys crossing here. Blue Creek, major milestone. Because they don't open up the campsites past this point until the 15th of August every year because of this exact crossing. So here we go. <laughs> Colder than it was last night. Yeah, it'll wake you up. <laughs> wow. So you're gonna warm up a bit. Yeah. Brian just said nothing like a Ford and a little climb first thing in the morning. We're gonna look right here, Joey. Okay. Yeah, that explains everything right there. Three slides, 14 kilometers. That's our destination for tonight. You're saying we've already come a kilometer? Well, maybe, yeah. All right. That way. Some views now, finally starting to open up after days of walking in that. Well, no, sorry, it wasn't days, but quite a long time. Beautiful, look at that. Evelyn's sticky note did say that this section was supposed to be scenic. So that's awesome. And uh, a little more than a kilometer to camp and it is. Even looking down the range is spectacular. I mean, just look at that. Whew. Trying to be quiet walking along here. See if we can see any animals. I mean, this is great. It'd be great moose habitat out here, you know. Joey's used to seeing so many animals in Yellowstone. It'd be nice to uh, have some stuff for him up here. He actually missed that elk, that female elk, yesterday because he was always behind us doing some other shots. Isn't that beautiful? Some old bridges here. <laughs> look at this giant rock that's on top of this bridge. And as I look around, the only way that could have been moved is by water? Three slides, warden's cabin. My goodness. <laughs> there hasn't been much going on here for a long time. Wow. Three kilometers to our campsite, and that's pretty much right on. Another great view if you're a warden, but uh, I don't think there's been many wardens here over a long period of time. Arrived. North boundary continues that way, but we are going 300 meters down to three slides and I'm ahead of the boys so what I'm gonna do is put my hiking pole down here like that and make a little arrow for them and then I'm gonna go down uh, and we'll have a look around another little sign down here so we'll work our way through this forest and we should end up down here on the edge of a lake and here it is, three slides. I'll try to count those for you later. <laughs> but uh, obviously, there's the spot. Tent pads will be, I guess, somewhere. 
back in there. And uh, would you look at that view? Wowie, wowie, wow. Once we get set up, I'll show you around. Amazing. We're expecting to hear some animals tonight in this big meadow and behind those trees, the river's running down that way. So uh, in fact, if I yeah, actually go over here and you just look out here next to the campsite, you can see along the shoreline here, lots of animal tracks. So I'm not, they were not gonna come near us, but they do use this route. Um, little shot around camp. I already showed you the eating area when I walked in. I've stuck my tent in this kind of weird spot there. Joey's still pondering life where he's gonna put his tent. Brian's doing the same. Not the greatest place for tent pads. There is a nice one back up in there where kind of Joey's kind of walking there now, but uh, over this way is the privy. It's a pole and a hole. And there used to be a bear hang here, but it's gone. And I'm gonna show you what happened real quick. You're coming into three slides. Uh, there's your bear pole. See the nails coming out? And then if you look up, there's the other half here at three slides. I've had the worst time on this trip trying to remember where I'm at. And I figured it out this morning and told the guys, it's because Evelyn's stickers are on the map and the campsites we had planned to go to were, are different on her map and different in my mind than what we booked for this trip. Especially when we decided to come to uh, Rock Lake to start. So I've, I just gotta, you know, pick it up, Stu. Come on. Maybe a couple hours looking at that will help. Mm. This is tasting really good tonight. But that's looking even better. What a view for dinner, huh? My, my, my. I just finished my supper. Uh, the gang's getting ready to have theirs. I was a little hungry because I'm fighting this cold. <clears throat> but uh, fire's going, beautiful fire. Look at this. I'm out here now in this uh, meadow where we get our, our water sources over here. If you're out here, um, it's very cold and very clear water, but if you stir up the bottom, you're gonna get a lot of silt in your, um, well, whatever you're using for water, whether it's a filter bag or just a, you know, an Nalgene bottle, so. But there's the view, and we are hoping that maybe we'll hear some noise out here tonight. Just a spectacular campsite, uh, view-wise. It's a five-star view, for sure. Really, really beautiful. So 15K today is what we did from uh, Blue Creek. We made that crossing first thing in the morning. And then tomorrow, about 12.2-ish, uh, I'm gonna say 12.2-ish to um, oatmeal. <laughs> then up over Snake Indian past Bang and then around Twin Tree and all that sort of good stuff in the days that follow. We're watching the weather because it may actually rain over Labor Day weekend, which is when we'll be heading through uh, the pass and Twin Tree and all that stuff. So, you know, you gotta take it as it comes out here and uh, whatever nature gives you, you have to deal with. And we're totally equipped for that. It'll still be very beautiful. So, uh, an excellent day four. We're gonna enjoy the fire and I'll see you in the morning. Day five, gorgeous morning here at uh, Three Slides. Well, a little chilly. <laughs> We'd like a little sun. Actually, Joey, uh, Joey started a fire to kind of warm up. And uh, look at that view. What a great place to wake up. So, a little over 12 kilometers to Oatmeal, get us set up for uh, Snake Indian Pass, which is a big milestone for us. And uh, so we're gonna have some breakfast and, <coughs> excuse, excuse me, oh good Lord. Have some breakfast, warm up a bit. And uh, it's Joey's birthday. Happy birthday, Joey. <laughs> it is. Yep, Joey's out here on his birthday. We're not going to say what number. Well, it's my last birthday in the 30s. Okay, there you go. It's his, it's his last birthday in the 30s. So <laughs> This is going to be my final tour of the 30s right now. Hey, today. Oh my gosh, that's right. Started off with the fire and Canadian Rockies. Yeah. And glacier view. Not bad. Happy birthday, man. Thank you. Thank you. Three slides. Gorgeous view. I came up a little early ahead of the guys because uh, they didn't see my arrow. <laughs> so I was like, well, I better go up and get my, my other hiking pole. Brian's still packing up a bit, Joey's ready. So I'm gonna start walking to oatmeal slowly. Uh, 
I mean, these two guys are professional backpackers, really, and they're a lot faster than me. So I go a little further ahead and let them catch up. But I did want to make sure I have my pole. Look down the valley from where I've been coming. Wow, eh? Really. And I'm going this way. Continue up. Slow, gradual turn to the right. Keep an eye out for this. As you get back down toward the river and the meadows. Hiker trail. Veers to the right. Horse trail goes down along the bog. I'll be happy to be up here. Instead of going down through there. Been hiking for about an hour and I uh, just decided to have a break and wait for the guys. Um, and th I thought I'd take a moment to show you what's already broken on day five of the trip. This happened on day three. This is my uh, Black Diamond, what's it called? Alpine Carbon Cork uh, trekking pole. And if you look here, you can see it, the carbon fiber has completely snapped off. It's usually about this long with the point. Um, what I've done is I've extended it as far as I can. And, uh, you know, it's a little shorter, but at least I can still use it. So I, I mean, I've had it for three years. I have no idea about the warranty, um, but it's definitely broken. <laughs> now, the other thing I'm going to show you, and I've had this problem before. I don't know what I was thinking bringing these out here. Uh, Z-Pax Gators. I ripped a pair on the West Coast Trail last May, and uh, they replaced them, and, but they were like, well, you know, they're lightweight, and I'm like, well, okay, fine. If you're going through rocks and stuff, I get that. Totally fine. But when I show you where these ripped, you're going to realize that they ripped because, and just let me grab the camera. All right, watch down as I go here now. All right, they ripped here and here on both sides where, where my feet might might touch together. Now, I should have brought my outdoor research ones. I mean, that would have been the smart, sorry about that, hi. <laughs> that would have been the smart thing to do, but I wanted to bring these because they're lightweight. I have a, actually have a spare pair with me too because they're lightweight. But Z-Packs, these shouldn't rip just because your boots are touching together. Um, if I ripped them on the outside or something with a rock, then okay, gotcha. But uh, yeah, pretty disappointed in that. It happened on the first day, so. And I hope I just haven't jinxed myself by talking about broken gear on day five when I've still got about a week to go out here. Six, seven nights. So uh, hopefully there's no more. Darn it, I was gonna eat those, but they're not ripe. Wild strawberries along the trail here. I'll keep an eye out for those, because they're yummy. They actually grow on the hillside of our house in New Brunswick. So, uh, yummy, yummy. But not just yet. Walking and pooping. La 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 la. First I've seen today. I actually haven't seen too much so far. Camp. Boys didn't catch me and I'll be honest with you right now, I am not moving fast. That doesn't mean they're moving slow, it means they must have left a fair bit behind me. I'm not moving fast because of this cold. And uh, so I thought I'd get a little head start not to hold the guys up. Turns out that uh, they must have found more stuff to photograph than I did. So here we are. Oatmeal. Well, Brian's here. How was your day? One. 
Excellent. Welcome to Oatmeal. Well, I've been wondering all day how a campsite came to be named Oatmeal. <laughs> yeah, there's Joey. How was your day? I didn't mean to get that far ahead of you, honest to God. No. This cold this cold's killing me and I was walking like a like a sloth. I figured you guys would be up behind me in no time. I'm walking like a sloth. Buddy. I was. I really was. You're doing pretty good. Oh, I'm doing good now because I'm sitting down. Welcome to Oatmeal. Canadian mountain goats. Yeah, right. <laughs> Don't make me laugh, I'll cough. How you feeling? Brian's enjoying himself, having a nice uh, little relax. I just had a little lay down uh, to try to shake this cold. There's me, Brian, Joey. I'll take you over here. What's interesting is uh, there's actually another little area over here with a fire pit. These aren't the uh, usual horse camp fire pits. This is a hiker horse, and those fire pits tend to be bigger. But uh, bear pole, well, bear hang, let's put it that way. And then if you come over here, underneath these beautiful trees, there you go. You can see, I guess if you were alone, you could set up in there if you had to, if the weather was bad. We are expecting some rain over the next couple of days, so hopefully it won't be too bad. Now, I mentioned there was no large fire ring like in all the other horse camps, so I expected to see a pole and hole over there where you can see the sign that says privy that way. But it's not. It's actually one of the large green. Uh, I don't know what to call them. They look like the Apollo capsule. <laughs> you sit on them and do your thing. And down here, a little view of the river. Joey's using the campfire the way it was intended to be used. Boiling some water. What's, uh, Joey, what's on the birthday menu today? I have no idea. I haven't really got that far. <laughs> M&M's. All right. Oh, Canadian Canada. Canadian M&M's. Beautiful. Canada. Are they different? They taste better. <laughs> All right. Well. <laughs> well, that's the end of day five. Uh, on the North Boundary Trail. It was a good day. Not a lot to see, as you probably have noticed if you watched the entire day. Uh, but a good day, and we're here. Now we're set up to go over Snake Indian Pass tomorrow, which is very exciting for us, uh, down into Bing, which, uh, according to the map, is 12.2 kilometers, but according to the sign out in front of the um, campsite here at Oakmeal, it says uh, 14. We're hoping for somewhere between 12 and 13, because it's going to be overcast and probably a little bit of rain tomorrow um, and we'd like to get some good shots going up and over the pass so yeah had a nice dinner uh, I'm gonna turn in early and see if I can get this cold to fly away um, and enjoy this view we'll see you in the morning morning Saturday day six North Boundary heading to Snake Indian Pass and bing uh, as I said yesterday, we'll have to see what the right mileage is. It says here 14, map says 12.2. And that's a pretty big discrepancy, so it'll be interesting to see who's correct. Uh, guys are getting up and at them. As you can see, overcast. And this is why we might have a chance of rain. Went to bed early last night with this cold, trying to just kick it. So hopefully that's uh, going to help me today. And what do you think? Day six of the North Boundary Beard. I wonder how it compares to the South Boundary Beard. I have to go back and have a look at this point. Flash it up right now. Yeah, well, pretty similar. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, anyway, some coffee and breakfast and then Snake Indian Pass. Woo hoo hoo. Just having breakfast here at Oatmeal and to celebrate, I thought it would be very appropriate to have. Uh, Granola. Trader. <laughs> Just after 10 a.m. Underway. Joey's up ahead. Brian's still got a couple things to pack up. And uh, I'm just going to walk slowly and meet up with Joey. And we'll all get together for the climb. Hello, mushrooms, huh? 
That was amazing. They're everywhere. By the way, little tip, well not a tip, but just an observation. Sometimes you'll come across those as they start to rot and they turn black. And depending on what state of blackness they're in, they can look kind of like poop, but they're not. They're just rotting mushrooms at the end of their yearly cycle, so. Finally getting some views. Our pass is off to the left. Bing Pass, I think, is over there. Joey's off over there getting some video, but uh, pretty steady climb out of oatmeal. I don't mind the climbs if there's something to look at, and uh, now there is. Look at that. Oof. This is gorgeous. Colors are coming in now. I mean, it's last day of August, 2019. So, uh, sorry about the sniffing. So yeah, the colors are coming in, it's gorgeous. Really, really pretty. Oh, there's Joy. This is awesome. Yeah, I was just talking about the colors, how they're coming in now. Oh, there goes a bird. The first animal sighting on this entire trail today so far. There's some animals in your shot right now. <laughs> I think you're probably right. They're just sitting down. Waiting. See them with the eye. That is you. Oh, there's where we come from. Let's give you a quick shot around here of this amazing valley. Would you call it a high hanging valley? Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a Got like this yeah. Long valley. I think the pass is right over there. Yeah. So uh, get over there and get out of this wind. It's one weird looking mushroom. Wow. So I left our break a little early because I was getting cold because I'm, uh, you know, a little under the weather. And uh, I think I walked past the sign for Snake Indian Pass. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Wow, 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 wow. Well, I know I crossed it and that's okay. Always nice to get a picture with the sign. But, uh, shoot. Well, anyway, big milestone. Certainly saw the pass. Just would have liked to picture with that sign. Gorgeous with the sun painting those mountains. Look at that. I mean, we're actually heading down that way and then to the left. So we're going to actually follow that range around to your left. But uh, gorgeous. Glad to have some sunshine today. Really a nice surprise. Not today. But not too long ago. They're out here. All right, coming into Bing. There's Bear Pole, Fire Pit. <laughs> Have to look around for some tent pads. Okay, we're doing a little medical procedure over here. Joey's yeah. got something going on with so his foot. <laughs> I'm just gonna get that little dirt out stepped. Okay. Stepped on the top of a root. Yeah, Joey walks barefoot a lot. This is a third straight day. I made okay. it barefoot, but this is the price I paid. Yeah. A little backcountry surgery. Courtesy of Brian DeLay. Put some collateral soup in there. <laughs> oh! Burn, yeah. It didn't burn. Up oh, it didn't burn. Well, what time. burned when you put that in? What did I you... I poured water in it pr at pressure. Oh! Get that dirt out. Okay. Because <laughs> it was just dripping in it, and every now and then it would squirt a steady stream. Oh! And I just squeezed it hard enough, got it in the right position, it would choo right into yeah. it, and he goes, ah! Yeah, the way you hopped around, I thought you, you know, threw some alcohol in there or something. Well, it felt like it. It, like went, it was all good. You were squirting it, everything squirting. All of a sudden, that pain shot all the way down here. <laughs> we are set up. Joey and I are over here. 
Swing around a little bit. Brian's over by Twin Tree Creek. We've discovered or decided that this is really just a little rise along a bog because uh, it's pretty buggy. And I mean, really, they say there are four tent pads here, you know, in the old days. I don't know. Where? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not the most uh, well outfitted uh, campsite I've been at. But anyway, it's fine. We're out in the middle of nowhere, which is awesome. There's the bear hang there. Privy's behind Brian. Up through that way, it's a pole in a hole. <clears throat> so uh, we're just gonna sit here and have some dinner, have a fire. Uh, that's the end of day six. What did we do? 12.3 kilometers? Sign said 14, map said 12.2, map wins today. Uh, hopefully, well actually the sign and the map agree tomorrow. 11 kilometers to Twin Tree, should be our easiest day. Not good, could be boggy. And then uh, we won't even talk about the day after tomorrow. Yet. <laughs> uh, what'd you guys think? Sink Indian Pass. That was the best, best views of the trip so far. I mean, yeah. Out in the open. I saw a Wolverine after uh, took a break up at the pass and you went down. I did, yeah. And then uh, Brian and I were messing around with some marmots. Brian was blowing <laughs> his whistle. Yeah. And all of a sudden this Wolverine was just running across the other side of the uh, valley. Really, it's not even a valley, but man, that would make your day. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty cool. But no, this has been the best, uh, best views. It's just beautiful, open yeah. country. Yeah, and then it was definitely the first time I think we've had some sloppy trails. Like, yeah, more to come. Yeah, actually, more to come. A little, a little bit of root finding in there. Not, not nothing major, but you know, you just yeah. got in the bogs, and it was like, yep, the trail disappeared. Yeah, you're happy to find that little single track again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. How about you? Well, Snake Indian uh, Pass was absolutely gorgeous. Not at all what I expected. I expected, uh, I don't know, maybe more rocks, less vegetation. It was just absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it really made, it paid off because the first part of the climb was in the woods and then finally it opened up and all of a sudden it doesn't feel so hard to keep climbing because oh, yeah, yeah. there's something to look at. So. Uh, I'm excited to look at Twin Tree tomorrow night. That's been a big one on my list too. So, uh, 11 kilometers and uh, gonna enjoy the fire. We'll see you in the morning. See ya. Morning, day seven. A little rain overnight as you can see. But our warmest night so far. In fact, I had to really unzip this morning and, and let some air in the sleeping bag because I was a little warm. But uh, be a wet, soggy start probably. Really excited about today because it's off to Twin Tree Lake, which is a place that I've really wanted to uh, to see for a long time. It's only 11 kilometers. It's mostly all downhill, so if the trail's in decent shape. Uh, it should be a pretty easy day, and uh, into camp early and just relax and enjoy the view. So uh, I'm gonna pack everything up. I think this morning here in the tent before I get out because it's so wet, and uh, have some breakfast and get underway. Just up at the uh, privy, the pole with the hole, and I got to thinking about, uh, well, I mean, there's a bit of a view here. You're, it's actually a little further up in the woods, but when you step down, it's like uh, we saw on the West Coast Trail, somebody carved in poo with a view. <laughs> so, uh, kind of reminded me of that this morning. So, uh, pretty much done. Gonna pack up the tent and uh, cross the uh, Twin Tree Creek, because the bridge is gone, and I know, uh, <coughs> Excuse me. I know in the South Boundary Trail video, I talked a lot about leaving boots on when doing crossings, and I still think that's the best way. The only exception for me is, uh, you know, when you're starting the day off with a crossing, like, and that's what I'm doing this morning, immediately starting with a crossing, I'm going to go across without my boots on, because I don't want to walk 11 kilometers in wet boots and wet socks. So uh, I'll cross the creek and then go ahead and put my boots on on the other side, kind of like I did at Blue Creek, just because I don't like starting the day soaking wet. But uh, All right, back to camp, pack it up and hit the twin tree. I'm excited about that. Okay, so here's where the bridge used to be, and that's not a good place to cross. <laughs> yeah, you probably know this, but it just as a reminder, if you get to these places where they put bridges, they always put bridges at a narrow spot, and those narrow spots tend to have faster moving water. So just look around, 
Obviously, this is where the horses probably would have crossed. It's not a big crossing, but, uh, you know, a little deep. It's certainly a way to get your blood going first thing in the morning. So let's see if I can go across here while videoing. Oh, ho, ho, baby. Yeah, that's cold. Numbing cold. Wow. Oh. Man alive. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now I'm just gonna sit here, enjoy this view, put my boots on, wait for the boys, and uh, carry on. Woohoo! It's the Bing, probably. You said no trespassing. <laughs> Cor there's uh, no emergency communications. Yeah, this is one of the more remote ones, and you can tell it hasn't been used for a while. Yeah, there's nice spaces here. We actually, uh, up even up there. Look at that outhouse up there. Yeah. We've seen a lot of wolf tracks. We've seen a lot of wolf scat too. Uh, these aren't obviously fresh, but that's a that's a healthy animal. Pooing and walking. La 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 la. Some semi-fresh bear scat with some nice red berries. <laughs> Joey, I don't think he chewed every berry. No, he didn't. No. So finally some bear signs. There hasn't been much. We, have a, we had a grizzly bear track in camp. That's true. <clears throat> now that's, we're getting out to that area, right? So I uh, joked with the guys last night. I think we're gonna see a bear, but. Uh, Actually you said, he says last night, right when we we're going to bed in that creepy, spooky camp spot, right? He's like, you know, I've just been <coughs> sensing bear all day. I, I can was. just feel it. Yeah. Then we got in our tents and slept right next to our food, right on the only trail that the animals could use if they want to come through this valley. Yeah, probably not good timing for that comment, but uh, I just... I slept really well after that. We actually slept, everybody slept phenomenally last night. So, anyway, maybe today's the day. That's a big tree. <laughs> wow. A little detour. Can you imagine being here when that thing fell over? Wow, what a noise, huh? The question is if nobody's here when it falls, is there a noise? Oh. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> is any of this really real? That's true. Just all hits. Today's philosophy day on the trail. Little intersection here. Hiker to the right. Must be a crossing. Let's go have a look here. Oh yeah, we're crossing this little drain here. No big deal. Okay, good. A little confusing coming down here where the track is, but I just spied this sign pointing hikers up this way, like was on the other side. So that tells me that I need to go down here and cross. Yep. Perfect. First really good view of Twin Tree Lake. Wow. Stunning, just stunning. We're all stopping to do our videos. It is beautiful and dead calm. Wow. <laughs> I just started laughing out loud. I'm gonna show you why here in a minute. We're gonna have our lunch here. But there's why. Hello, beautiful. Yeah. Twin Tree Lake. Not only are we gonna have our lunch here, we're gonna see that bear you're looking for. Yeah, look, look at this. For animals to walk on. Look at this. Oh, camp is down there. But look, and just listen. Nothing. This is awesome. Look at that light, too. It's kind of cool. Yeah. All right, we're going to sit here and take that view in, have some lunch, and head to camp. Wow. Well, that's a good specimen. Oh my goodness. Hello there, big fella. Here we are, Twin Tree Lake Cabin. Another nice spot. Pretty good view. Yeah, there it is. How you doing? 
See him up in that tree? Little cat face. What you looking at? What you looking at? You're a cute little thing. I can't see the rest of you, so I'm not quite sure what you are yet. Well, you're going that way. <laughs> you're cute. You, what are you? You muskrat? Yeah, maybe. Not really sure what that was. Couldn't see the whole thing. I didn't see it. Well, the north boundary goes to the right where Brian is. And we're going to go into uh, to Twin Tree. Just down here. And then tomorrow morning we'll come out and we'll head that way. Oh, that is the way we go tomorrow? Yeah, yeah that is the way we go tomorrow. <clears throat> so it is a little uh, spur trail. It is a little spur trail. Yeah, I didn't tell me about that. I don't Bit of a maze trying to find a camp. Game? I don't know what that means. All right, we're going that way. Oh, there's somebody tied a thing on over there. It's a bit of route finding uh, getting over here through this marshy bog area to the actual campsite. Someone was kind enough to tie a ribbon around the old oak tree here, pine tree. But the UTM coordinates are straight ahead here, so. Bit of an excursion to get in here. Wrong with this. No, it's beautiful. Wow, yeah. Trail back to the tent spots, you got a big fire ring. It's great. Look at that. Great kettle lake all at the same time. Wow. There's a little island out there in the middle you can see. There used to be two pine trees on that island and that's why this is called Twin Tree. Obviously one twin, is, twin has moved on to another dimension. Uh, so now it's just tree. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna set up. Once we do, I'll show you around. Our view from camp. Lake drains here, Twin Tree Lake. As I mentioned earlier, single tree. Rain delays over now, so I'm going to quickly show you around camp before the next round of rain comes in. Expecting the rain to end overnight and uh, hopefully have some sunshine tomorrow. So, um, quite a big campsite here, actually. This is the uh, area that uh, we've picked to use for food prep. Brian's here with his tarp. And uh, how'd you weather that rain? Pretty good? No problem. Yeah, no problem. Look at the space he's got under there. Amazing. Yeah, so food prep area, and then just back here, I'll show you a couple more places real quick. Uh, Joey and I put our tents just in this next little opening. That's where we've been weathering the rain, which came in in a good hour. Then we get back through here, there's even more tent space and another, another firebox. So, and then real quick, I'll show you where the privies, privy is. Uh, this is a horse camp, and like most horse camps, they have the green lunar capsule, or not lunar capsule, but command module from Apollo. There's another fire ring somebody brought back here, it looks like, a firebox. Yeah, so, pretty just back there. You can maybe see in the tree a little, a little uh, thing hanging, and there's also flags in the trees as well. I can actually see the green privy through the trees straight back there. Just having a little, uh, little supper in honor of Evelyn the vegetarian in the family, some pasta primavera. And uh, really cool to be here at Twin Tree. It's one of those places I've always looked at uh, on the maps. You know, three years I've been looking at this particular trail and you look at all the little lines and, and woo, where, what's it gonna be like? And uh, it was really cool to see Twin Tree Lake today and have our lunch by there and get to this campsite. Um, I'm also excited for the other places like uh, Chown. I'm uh, kind of excited about crossing Carcajou and Gendarme because they're now unbridged and can be pretty challenging. So you know, these are just things that you process over a period of time when you plan for a trip and then to actually get there and be out there and experience what they really look like instead of on a printed page is pretty cool. So, um, you know, it's just, uh, just really awesome to be out here and really awesome to be out here with these two guys too, so. Well, that's the end of day seven, 11 kilometers from Bing which was a somewhat forgettable campsite, <laughs> to this, which is certainly not. Uh, Twin Tree's awesome, we love it here, and uh, we're just getting a fire going there because it's damp and cold, 
big day tomorrow, our longest day, I think, of 16 and a half ish kilometers to Chown Creek, which is a big turning point for us because then we turn and head toward uh, Mount Robson. So that should be, that's uh, a big milestone, pretty cool uh, for us tomorrow. But it, it's probably going to be a slog. Typically, the hardest part of the trail, rocky, rooty, muddy, boggy. And with this rain, it's just going to kind of freshen things up for us a little bit. So, you know, we'll go slow and take our time and uh, get an early start and uh, try to get in early as well so we can enjoy what's supposed to be a pretty nice campsite. Um, just before I say goodnight, let me just grab the, let me just grab these cameras and show you the view. Twin Tree Lake. As I've said so many times, you can only get here if you walk in. And it's pretty sunny. See you in the morning. Day eight, and it's gonna be a wet start. Uh, rain has stopped, lots of rain overnight, and I'm under a, partially under a tree, so you get the dripping from the tree as well. It keeps everything kind of wet, but it's gonna clear up. Expecting uh, sun and clouds all day, and sun again tomorrow, so stuff will dry off, no big deal. Uh, slept really well last night, best night so far. So, pretty happy about that. Let's have a quick look here at the uh, day eight of the north boundary beard. Probably very similar to day eight of the south boundary beard. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, interestingly enough, today is Labor Day. And uh, probably going to be our Labor Day because we have 16 and a half kilometers to go to uh, Chown Creek. Another big milestone for us as we turn and head toward Mount Robson. But, uh, this typically, as I said, you know, yesterday is a tough, tough slog on the trail. And I think with all this fresh rain yesterday, overnight, uh, probably going to be a little bit of an adventure. So going to get up and at them, try to get out early and uh, make our way to Chown Creek. Absolutely, ridiculously stunning place to wake up. Twin Tree Lake, look at that. Just remarkable. Good morning. Get up here and give you a little shot of the lake as I head out. The boys are just packing up. I'm slow up hills and I know there's a climb out of here, so I just took off ahead of them, but uh, we'll be together most of the day today. I'm sure hiking to Chown. Probably stop at Donaldson for a little break. This is what you get when you leave your Canadian Rockies Trail Guide pages in your truck. There's a bridge across Twin Tree Creek. I gotta tell you, I'm just gonna say it now. This will be buried deep in the video on day eight, obviously, but uh, the Canadian Rockies Trail Guide is an absolute must when planning and doing these types of hikes. Even though YouTube videos are out now, like, like you know, ours from the South Bound, we kind of show it everything, you got to have the book. So, what we're doing out here is not a replacement for that because, I mean, look, a beautiful bridge across Twin Tree Creek. And I am really happy to see that, as you can see why. Woo! What a lovely spot for lunch. Nine and a half kilometers in, right around what the map said. Nowhere near what the sign said, Donaldson Creek campsite. And I am stopping here for lunch. Gonna wait for Joey, Brian. Oh, hello, Bear Scat. Oh, this is funny. So there's Bear Scat. Let me just pat, yep. <laughs> there's Bear Paul. And there's some poop. The bears have been here. We just had a lovely lunch here at Donaldson Creek. It was, uh, Gaia said 9.5, map said 9.1, and the sign said 11, just like it says here to Twin Tree. That's not correct. About nine and a half from here to Twin Tree. Chown says eight on the sign, but uh, map says 7.1. So, uh, let's go see what's right. Just left Donaldson, as you know, I just wanted to show you real quick uh, how pretty it is here. Yeah, we were told kind of to avoid Donaldson, but I look at this beautiful, beautiful creek. Come out here, the sun's hitting it the right way, dry some stuff off. 
And they're real pretty. Thank goodness for this bridge. Because uh, man, it's to stay dry most of the day. Talk about a change in topography. Not even topography, just vegetation. From bogs to that. And then, you know, probably back to bogs, but neat. It's a darn good thing this is here. <laughs> this is the Smoky River. And this bridge, get us onto the other side. I'll get down here and let's show you. This is a beautiful spot. You just wait. Ready? Here you go. Wow. Just pan around for you. Just show you where it goes. This gorge. Stopped here at an interesting section, uh, telling you to go that way for the north boundary. Uh, come down here to an official sign. Chown is 4K, it's uh, less than that, in, at least according to what I think, but uh, we'll see. Short river that way. And of course Donaldson is where we just had our break. So heading this way, obviously West Park boundary via Robson Pass. Lower Smoky Wardens Kevin. So it says over there, communications, excellent. All right, pen for the horses, and the trail, straight ahead. Looks like a little horse hiker split here. Well, I'm certainly not a horse, nor am I on one. So we'll go this way. A little messy here, but I can see yellow diamond up on that tree. So obviously you can see the cut line too, obviously straight ahead. You see all kinds of cut, cut logs though. Which means there probably was a bridge here at one point. But, uh, well, <laughs> I've seen better days. Yes, there was the bridge. Just walked out of the woods to this. There's a site for sore eyes. Look at that. Best Pass 6K. And Chow Creek. Horse camp straight ahead. We're going to go to Chow Creek Hiker Camp, which is right here. And uh, there's the bridge. Bridge is in good shape. Well, I'm sorry. The bridge isn't in great shape. But the bridge is, uh, well, it's still there. And that's helpful. My goodness me, look at that view. Hello, Chown Creek. All right, I'm gonna go down and find the campsite, which is down this way. And once we're set up, I will show you around. What a difference 24 hours makes. Not only this gorgeous weather we're having and uh, warming things up, drying things off from yesterday's rain, but also this view. Look at this. Walk through the eating area and just just let it pan around a little bit. This is obviously Chown Creek. Let me just pan around and show you this piece of paradise. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. I mean, just I mean, even over here, as I come around. And we look up this way, look at that, look. I mean, it's just endless here, it's gorgeous. Stunning glacier up there, wonderful. A little tour around camp, 
obviously walked you through the eating area. When I walked in up here from the trail, the bear, uh, bear, I guess we'll call it cable, was there. And uh, Privy is up through there. It's a pole in a hole. And uh, Joey and I are set up over here. Brian hasn't set up yet. I think he's probably gone off now to uh, hang his food. So tomorrow, 11.1 uh, kilometers just up to Wolverine, which won't quite be like this, <laughs> but it'll, you know, it's halfway to, a, on our way to Adolphus. And we're going to cut around down that way and then start heading up that way toward Mount Robson. So, um, yeah, what a, just an awesome spot. There's your tour of Chown Creek. Highly recommended. Just a, a really spectacular place from one end. To the other. There's our view from the campfire tonight. Great hike today from Twin Tree to Chown Creek. A lot less difficult than we thought. The reports we read, uh, really, we didn't have too much trouble at all. Long day for us, 17 kilometers. I know that's really not long, but for this trip, 17 is one of our longer days. Uh, tomorrow, much shorter, 11.1 to Wolverine North. Um, you know, we really don't feel like pushing to Adolphus tomorrow. We're in no hurry and we're out here to enjoy ourselves and the weather tomorrow is going to be supposed to be spectacular, Bluebird Day. So we're just going to go to Wolverine and enjoy. Okay, after that, we go to Adolphus. It's only a few kilometers up the hill to uh, over up to the Mount Robinson Provincial Park area and, you know, we'll kind of just play that by ear, but one day at a time. Just a, just a gorgeous night and uh, looking forward to more great views tomorrow as we head off to Wolverine North. I'll see you in the morning. Morning, day nine. Look at that view behind me, huh? Oof, baby. Pretty good sleep last night. Not too cold. A little chilly in the mornings as always, but uh, not bad. Really, really nice. Sun's starting to come down. The wall here should heat us up pretty shortly. Just a gorgeous view this morning. Yeah, day nine and we're heading up around that way uh, to Wolverine. We'll check that out and see what that's like and plot our next moves from there. But first, a little coffee and breakfast and uh, drying the rain fly from my condensation. But uh, yeah, a little coffee and breakfast and off we go. We've packed up, we've had a nice leisurely morning, dried some stuff off. Look at that. Bye-bye, Chown Creek. Excellent little campsite. Really, really, I was saying earlier, we could take a zero here and have a wonderful day, but uh, we're not. <laughs> off to the bridge. There's the bridge. I gotta tell you, the water was lapping up on the middle of that bridge yesterday afternoon. And I know I always harp about getting up and getting across the river early if you're worried about the water levels. And there, that's a perfect indication of why. Water here significantly lower this morning over that bridge than it was yesterday. So, even though that looks a little rickety, it's a lot better than having water hitting your feet. You can see where it was wet, right? In the middle there. So get up and get going in the morning when you have these river crossings that might trouble you. But look at that view. Joey, you said that was what? Mount Bess? Mount Bess, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Chown Glacier, Glacier over there, yep. Yeah. Man, what a place. All right, I'm ready to walk across this bridge. <laughs> Let's do it. And you know what? I'm gonna turn this camera off. If you wanna see me crossing, Check out Joey's video. All right, here we go. Well, I made it across. Really no big deal. Little, that one's a little wobbly, but it's an easy crossing. We could afford it here this morning too, to be honest. So. No, we could afford it this morning if we had to. Bridge looks great. And a boy. Bad. Nothing to it. Yeah, we could afford it, I said to Joey earlier. If you had to, you know, if you had to. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. All right, onward.
We've made it to the intersection. Little spur trail with uh, Timothy Slides. Just 300 meters down the hill. That's our view from uh, the little intersection here at Timothy Slides. We stopped in a little break. Well, I requested the little break. <laughs> Demanded the break. I, I, yeah, thanks. We're stopping here, guys. We're stopping here, boys. Anyway, that's our view. Spectacular. Brian was noticing that, that deep cut up there. You guys want to go up and explore that? Yeah, no. I didn't think so. Time to get wet. Wolverine Warden's Cabin. <laughs> well, so for the first time in any time I've shown you Warden's Cabins, I will not be able to say they get the best views because uh, while it's a beautiful little spot, I mean, not, not a good sign for our camp. <laughs> No, that's true. Hey, beautiful little spot, but most you see you've seen most wardens cabins. I've shown you the giant mountain views, vistas. Crossing two of three, and when I say that, I mean Blue Creek, Carcassou, and Gendarme. These are the reasons, the unbridged reasons, that they don't open this trail up on this side of Blue Creek until the 15th of August. So uh, we get across this. We're two for three. And then it's just gendarme. So, uh, Carcassou, here we come. Here comes Brian. We're going to call him Smokey. Smokey? He hikes in the Smokies. There's the old bridge. Oh. So you can go up there too, Joey. Probably if you go upstream away, it's probably a lot easier. Yeah. But uh, pretty deep right here. Up past my knees. So uh, Brian's going to come across and we're going to have lunch. <laughs> you make that look easy. <laughs> nice little lunch break at Carcassou. On our way to Wolverine. Just drop down in here beside the river. Look at that. We're heading up that way, of course, but as I've said, always look around, look behind. Because if you do, you get to see something like that. Gorgeous. Really, really pretty. Hiker trail cuts up from the river. Looks like the horses would stay down low. I've got two different layers loaded on Gaia GPS. One shows the trail I'm on, and the old uh, Canada Topo map shows the horse trail, which goes down by the river, which is uh, quite a bit shorter than this cut up. When you come out of that mess hiker trail up in there, head right to the water. And what you'll do is you'll intersect the track right along the water. But whoa, that's, uh, that's a bit of bushwhacking. No big deal. Interesting. They cut us up through there on the other side, and you can see the markers here. So very, very strange. Here we go. Hello there, fella. Oh, look, right here. Look, look, look. Double fronts here, look. Ooh. Bear tracks. That's cool. Close to camp. Wolverine. It's actually Wolverine North on the map, but I think it's the only Wolverine left. So uh, tomorrow, Adolphus, 13K for us. Uh, I'll show you around. Actually, the water source is over here. Brian's getting some water now. It's, uh, you know, full of silt. Uh, as you can see, the pot, uh, privy is over that way. That's uh, interesting. Bear pole's up there. Yeah, that's <laughs> privies across the water. At least we'll all have clean feet. A little shot around the uh, camping area. Joey's pondering life. 
big fire ring and uh, lots of nice little places to tuck tents even over here there's a nice flat spot there too so um we like to keep ryan off by himself if possible so <laughs> no anyway that's wolverine we're going to uh get set up and then uh i don't know figure out figure out what we're going to do next have a fire that's a good idea so joey and i have crossed that uh, we use a little log to kind of get our way across the uh the stream and we went past the hole and the pole privy and we've come out here to the flats where we kind of wish we'd camped because this is beautiful i mean look at this that's the way we're going tomorrow up toward adolphus and robson and uh wow wow look at that view it'd be awesome to be out here right now gorgeous so well we're in the campsite that's what they want you to do they do allow you to random camp you have to and everything but uh that's from where we've come look at that sunset Joey out there trying to get a good shot. Anyway, look at this view tonight. From just 100 meters from the campsite. Beautiful. Day 9, winding down. We are here at uh, Wolverine. 13 kilometers tomorrow to Adolphus. Uh, today was actually 13.25, not 11.1 .1 like the map says. So 13.25 from campsite to campsite. Although this campsite's right on the trail. So um, similar to La Grasse. Uh, on the south boundary. Uh, yeah, tomorrow 13 to Adolphus and you know you're getting to that part of the hike. Joey's obviously caught my cold. Everybody's thinking about showers and food, <laughs> stuff like that. So we, you know, we have the inkling of saying it's Wednesday tomorrow, <coughs> excuse me, and if we had 2.9 more kilometers in us or 3k, we could get over from Adolphus to the Berg Lake area to the pass and uh, maybe see if they have room for us for three temp pads on uh, on a Wednesday night somewhere up top. A um, little risky going up there, and if they don't, then you're then what do you do? But uh, if we could get up there, then we would be out maybe a day early. Uh, take our time going down. Obviously, that's the, the highlight of the hike is all the, the views up at uh, Mount Robson. But So we'll play that one by ear and see how we feel when we do our 13K to Adolphus tomorrow and some of the climb that we have ahead of us. Um, yeah, so pretty good day. Going to get to bed early and... See how tomorrow goes. See you in the morning. Morning, day 10. Day 10, and uh, there was chatter last night about no rain and maybe leaving off the rain fly at one point, and well, I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> what the heck is this? It was supposed to be nice this morning. Ah, the mountains, you never know. So, today, also day 10 of the North Boundary Beard. What do you think? Huh? Getting a little mountain man going here. I'm doing my Joey impression with this beard. <laughs> I got a ways to go on the hair, though. I can't, I don't think that's even possible for me now at my age, but anyway. 13 kilometers to Adolphus or bus. That's the plan, and then we'll kind of see how we feel but uh, this rain could delay us a little bit so either way it's gonna be a good day Adolphus another big milestone kind of the last campsite on the official North Boundary Trail and then we hit uh, Berg Lake Trail wait for the rain to pass and get some coffee and get moving big uh, creek crossing today at Gendarme one of the ones that uh, you know when it's high it can be real troublesome so we'll see what that's like to get going Are you ready? I mean, we're, we're, we're ready. I'm ready. You don't look ready. But go put your pack on. By the time you put your pack oh. on, you're ready to go. That's a four second maneuver. Well, go do it. Oh Watch. yeah, okay. All right, I'm going to put my pack on. He won't be ready. Look, look, look. He suck. see? Four seconds, you're not ready. You're not, pack's not ready. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Wolverine. Pretty good night, except for that rain this morning, which kind of delayed us, but 13 kilometers to our next stop. This is cool. Uh, Joey noticed this this morning, and you know, I always harp on this, but look. Look at the water level this morning compared to last night that I showed you. Pretty crazy, really. So, that's true. yeah, I mean, right in, huh? that's why, uh, that's why it's just better to wait till the morning if you have a high creek crossing or something, because, you know, you're not going to, uh, you're not going to risk <coughs> as much. 
And I'm just going across the water because I know in less than a kilometer we're doing uh, gendarme. Yes, that's the trail. Well, this is where the hikers go. I wanted to see what it was like and uh, across over this little part. See what the rest of it looks like. Okay, here's a good pan of uh, gendarme. I really don't have a clue where the bridge used to be, to be honest with you. It's long gone. Water's pretty tame this morning. I mean, it's moving pretty good. I'm gonna go down there. I think that's the place to go. And uh, head back up this way and find the trail. The boys are a little bit behind me, so if I can get over here in my big orange shirt, show them where to head to, then we can all do this little ford. I think this is the spot right here. There's your, there's your trekking pole view. That was nothing this morning, really, to be honest. That's, uh, that's really a non-issue a non this morning. <laughs> he makes it look easy, doesn't he? Yeah. So come back up high after you do that crossing down low and you'll see a yellow marker over there in the trees. Get you back to the trail. Just cut up. And uh, back on your way. Brian just said look behind us. And that's always good advice. We've come to another one of those lovely intersections where the hiker trail goes up and climbs a little bit and comes down and meets the horse trail again. With the water levels the way they are, we may take this horse trail and just stay flat. Horse trail it is, our feet are already wet. So we figure we have to go through some wet down here and that's life, I mean, who cares? But we'll avoid the climb and maybe some other stuff up in there. So horse trail it is till we intersect the hiker trail again down the flats a ways. Views are way better down here, but look, there's the hiker trail cutting along that ridge up there. Look at that. That's, uh, I'm glad we're down here. Oh, <laughs> this yeah. is not much nicer walk. Well, it, it's also, it's just so different than what we've been walking through. Uh-huh. That's just more of the same. More of the same. This is beautiful. Yeah. The views are phenomenal. Here's the other end of the split. We actually intersected the hiker trail early. Uh, horse trail continues off that way on this end. So if you do take the horse trail, you can follow that a lot longer. You had found the horse trail, Brian, right again? Yeah, because yeah. it gets a little sketchy, but... All right, back on the intersection, which means the track will be a little easier to see because the horses will have churned it up. Isn't that nice now? The flying trail crew from 2006, when they put this bridge up, put a little bench here. That's pretty kind of them, isn't it? Very kind. Joey, uh, you're in Canada now, you've been hiking in Canada now. It's time you sounded a little more Canadian. Okay. So let's just say that Canadian. Canadian. Good, not bad. Now, us Canadians, we like to get into our R's. You know, R's. Like, like hard. Canadians, R's. Hard. Hard. Hey, that's pretty, no, watch my mouth though, watch. Hard. 
hard. Good, good. And then uh, where I go up the Maritimes, if somebody was doing something, like you call him Buddy. Hey, look what Buddy's doing. What's, what's Buddy doing over there? Look what Buddy's doing. Uh, the other thing we said in the Maritimes was if somebody was hiking fast, for example, you go, oh man, Buddy's giving her. Mm. Oh man, Buddy's giving her. Gendarme. <laughs> that hey, that's terrible. pretty good. That terrible. We have another saying. If it's not homemade bread, it's store bought. So you're gonna go out and buy some, uh, hey, hey mom, do you have any bread? No, I've only got store bought. Hey, so see, that's the first thing I noticed. You guys call them mom. Mom. Like mom. Mom. Hey, mom. Mom. I'm gonna go get some store. What are we talking about again? Store bought <laughs> bread. Store bought bread? That, yeah. That's not even a word, bought. I know that. <laughs> okay. Well, it is a word, hey, mom. I just... We're gonna go get some store bought bread. Hey. You know what my mom would say to me if I said that to her? What? Button is not a word, <laughs> Joseph. And then the last thing you need to know is if you're gonna go to the bathroom in the woods, you know, number two, you went to see a man about the horse. Um, no. You went to see a man about a horse. No, what are you gonna say if you're gonna do it? I go, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go see a man about a horse. Yes! I haven't had to go see a man about a horse in five days. That's too much That's information. kind of got me a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you wanna try a Canadian phrase? Yes. All I have to say, <coughs> Is and people think the southern accent is screwed up. <laughs> Been following some bear tracks since our break, and I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. That really looks to me like a small bear and maybe a larger bear. I mean, I don't know. Oh, and it is recent too because it's over top of this guy's boot print. So we may have a mom and cub out here. Let's hope it's of the black variety because they're a little less aggressive, <laughs> to say the least, if that's the case. But those are reasonably fresh, for sure. Interesting. You can tell you're getting close to Berg Lake. Helicopters. You see through the trees there. There he goes. Here's an important intersection. Show it to you. So, we've come from Wolverine. Adolphus is two kilometers away, according to the sign. And then if you go this way, Moose Pass and the Coleman Glacier. That's a very, very important intersection. And I thought Adolphus was a little further away than two kilometers. I just figured out why it said two kilometers. That's for Adolphus Horse Camp. Adolphus Hiker Camp, three kilometers. We're a little closer to Robson than that. Just wanted to update you, that makes much more sense to me. Well, that's no black bear. That's a big guy. Okay. We are seeing tons of bear sign now as we get closer to Adolphus. Raining off and on, everything's soaking wet. Little trail marker over there. We should be getting very close to the horse camp. And then just a little further on to the hiker camp. Like maybe a kilometer or so. So this looks like this is gonna say hiker. Yep, that's what it says, hiker. So I'll go that way. Adolphus. Here we are. 26K to the Mount Robson Trailhead, where the cars are. We've come from Wolverine. It's not 14, I'll tell you about that later. Quick little shot around camp. Of course, come in down that way. Water source is just across there. It's the uh, Smoky River. This is the eating area we've uh, chosen, right by the Bear Hang, which is here. I'll walk you over this way too. <coughs> Excuse me. Getting our dinner ready now. A couple other folks in camp with us tonight. 
So we're getting close to Mount Robson. Adolphus gets used for quite a few different things. Some day hiking options here. Uh, Moose Pass is not too far. This is where we decided to set up our tents. Uh, there's actually another fire pit over here, but it's, you know, it's seen better days. And the privy is actually up that way, and it's one of the green space capsule ones. <coughs> Pardon me. A little bit of a view from our tents tonight. And uh, that's pretty much it for Adolphus. Well, that's the end of day 10. 11 and a half kilometers. We thought it was going to be further. Um, 13 we were kind of counting on. And I'm not sure whether it was because we took the flats and the horse trail or, or what. But uh, we were pretty happy about that. It was a pretty easy walk. Except for the weather, which has been uh, not as forecast. It was supposed to be partly cloudy, which means sunny with some clouds, partly. <laughs> it's rained all day. And it rained pretty much all day. So the same forecast for tomorrow, partly cloudy. Could be a chilly night. And uh, we're not quite sure what we're doing tomorrow as far as hiking out or how far we're going to hike or whether we can get a place on the mountain or whether we're going to get down to the trailhead. So I thought I better take this opportunity in case we split up to ask these guys, how's the hike? Who wants to go first? <laughs> Joey, <laughs> All right. Joey, just go. What do you want to know? How's the hike? How, did you like it? Yeah, I like the hike. Okay. I, would, I would do it again. Yeah. Um, I mean, I loved it. I, it's... Uh, how do you describe it? Like, it was a, a very, like, it was a camping trip. It was very leisure. Like, we had time in camp in the morning. We were never under any, like, rush during the day while we were hiking. And we had plenty of time in camp every afternoon to just enjoy where we were at and have nice fires. And, yep. you know, we had great weather up until now, really. <laughs> Fantastic weather. Yep. Um, got to see the Milky Way a few different times. Got to see everything. Got to be just in woods. Not many people. I think we only passed four different groups. Uh, two of which were doing the North Boundary Trail, and two of which were just hiking in from uh, where we started from. So, yeah, that's a lot of solitude, and it felt wild. And we saw a ton of animal tracks. I kept comparing it to the thoroughfare in Yellowstone, and it's not really fair to compare places, but it felt. I got the same feeling on this trip as I do when I do my backpacks in the thoroughfare of Yellowstone. It felt like the same thing. You're just, first of all, you're in a lot of lodgepole forest. Uh, the difference was you had a lot more mountain views, uh, but your camps were all similar. It, it was uh, animal tracks everywhere, animal scat everywhere. I, I loved it. Can't wait to come back. I would do this trip every year. I'd probably do it in the fall when the river crossings are, uh, you know, are, are lower and. Uh, and this is an awesome trip, so thanks for inviting me. And yeah, man. I had a great time with these guys. And, uh, yeah, it's awesome. It's an awesome hike. Brian? My kind of backpacking trip. All right. Nice, beautiful hikes. A lot of time at camp to relax. Just very, very enjoyable. A couple of surprises. I was not expecting the dense, thick forest that we walked through. Wasn't expecting all of the... Uh, lush undergrowth in the forest it was just absolutely beautiful kind of like an enchanted forest we had lots of uh, magnificent views occasionally between the forest walks um, we had some great campsites the campsites were a little smaller than i expected we had four that would be really be tough to determine which was yep. the best wellburn mm. uh twin tree Three slides, uh, three slides yep. and uh, Chown Creek. Mm. They were all really, really nice campsites. The uh, creek and river fords were not as bad as I had anticipated, so that was a good thing. Another surprise was all the bogs we had to walk <laughs> through, but once you get used to wet feet, that's not a big deal. But uh, it was a fantastic backpacking trip, and like Joy, I would do it again too. We had great. Uh, companionship we all got along fantastic and it was just a wonderful wonderful trip yeah these guys are awesome i'll do my wrap up at the trailhead but uh guys are class acts it's been a pleasure <laughs> if i don't see you tomorrow a pleasure to backpack with you and i'll do it again anytime yeah, south right. boundary Absolutely. with this guy next year that's right yeah so uh tomorrow morning between 22 and 26 downhill depending on which sign which map or which person you believe and uh we're gonna get up and at him in the morning we'll see you then morning day number 11 and it's a chilly one clouds moved away last night joey reports ice on his tent this morning 
I can tell you with these boots on that are wet, my feet are like ice. And you can see the sun starting to paint the mountains up there. So eventually we're going to have a beautiful day. And uh, still not sure what that day is going to entail. But uh, the idea is probably to hike down to the bottom. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to sneak a little coffee in here on one of these getaway mornings while I'm packing up and uh, head down the trail. Also day 11 of the North Boundary Beard. What do you think? <laughs> okay, little update. I couldn't let this go. My rain fly is also frozen with ice. Wow. Well, even more need for this boiling water and coffee. Yeah, wow, icy. On the way from Adolphus, sun's up and you can see what happens with all the foggy haze when the sun comes up. It was crystal clear until that happened. People wonder kind of how the weather happens in the mountains. That's certainly part of it. So a few kilometers up to uh, under, just under three kilometers up to the border with Jasper National Park and Mount Robson Provincial Park in British Columbia. And uh, once I cross that border, that's the end of the North Boundary Trail and the start of the Berg Lake Trail. And then down the hill. Good morning. Holy moly. There we go. <laughs> wow. Well, good morning. How was your night? Was it as cold as mine? Hope not. Of course, you have all those feathers. A very misty Adolphus Lake. Wow. Wow, wow. There it is. Goodbye, Jasper National Park. Goodbye, Alberta, for a short time. And uh, yeah, we're on our way down to uh, well, the parking lot. I'm up here right now, and I gotta go all the way down that way. The boys are a little bit behind me. Here's the provincial boundary, right here. Alberta. And uh, BC. So the North Boundary Trail is complete. Now oh, on the Berg Lake Trail. Hope this uh, fog burns off. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it's like being in uh, it's funny, after all those days out in the middle of nowhere, the closer you get to Berg Lake, the more people and noise, especially from these helicopters, they're just non-stop. I think we've seen about six in the last, well, less than 24 hours. And there's one here trying to land in this fog. Some guys over there waiting for it, I think. So good luck with that, fellas. I think he's going to be a while. I think this is the Robson Pass campsite. And a note to anyone thinking of booking the Robson Pass campsite. Listen. Right, so your helicopter landing pad right beside your backcountry campsite. And uh, if you're looking for peace and quiet, maybe that's just something to consider. That's uh, ongoing, so just a little FYI. Little intersection here. You're going up to Snowbird Pass. That's off this way. A little shot there. Coming up on a rear guard campsite up there in the woods. You can still hear those helicopters though. Just if you're, you know, booking a campsite. 
Yep, that's rear guard up in there. Some folks. Ooh, look at these tent pads. They're beautiful. <laughs> wow. Place to dump your dirty water. Looks like a bear storage box over there. Cool. Hargreaves Shelter. Very civilized. Finally alongside Berg Lake. And, uh, well, that's part of the cause of our fog. I can sort of see Mount Robson up there, starting to peek through this fog. So that's cool. It'll burn off. But, uh, wholly busy up here. My goodness. I just walked through that shelter I showed you, and... <clears throat> People are getting up and at them. It's funny, I said good morning to like five different people and nobody said a word to me. <laughs> maybe, I, maybe it's his beard. What do you think? Scary? I look a little, a little scary? <laughs> I don't know. Rising out of the mist. The sun's starting to win. Burning this off. Mount Robson. Berg Lake just below it to my left here a little bit. Beautiful. You won't be able to see this, but the, I think they call it calving. When the glacier breaks off a piece, I just heard a giant chunk of, of glacier fall from over here down into the lake. Wow, timing's cool on that. Ooh, this guy's in no hurry to get out of the way. See what happens when I go a little closer. Hey fella, how are you? How's your nuts? Are your nuts cold this morning? No, yeah, maybe not. All right, have a good one. See the ice floating out there? That's what I was hearing earlier. It's coming through Marmot Campground. And uh, there's my view behind me. The Robson River, starting to make that big sweeping left turn. Follow this river down a little ways. I'm gonna go through the Valley of a Thousand Falls. Okay, trail intersection. Let's go see Emperor Falls. Wow, Emperor Falls is making its own clouds this morning. I can't even see it through there. And I'm not going to go down any closer because it's all blowing this way. Very cool. Down that way. There's a view of Emperor Falls. a view of White Falls and then you turn around and start back down the trail and you see this. Spectacular. Like, look at that. Whoa. Gorgeous. Here's Whitehorn. Campground. You can see. I'll show you the typical tent pads we've been seeing. Very nicely graded. It's 
like this. Very nice. All right, next milestone's Kimmy Lake. Here's the view from Kimmy Lake campsite. Beautiful. Next uh, stop, the car. Nice little spot here. Look behind you. One last look back. Oh my goodness, that's hard to believe. Look at that. There's the Berg Lake Trailhead right here. Here's a bridge. <laughs> Let's walk across that bridge right now. Wow, finally. Wow. I'm back. The North Boundary Trail and the Burger Lake Trail completed. Lots of folks around here, so I'm gonna walk down and find the car and then we'll wrap it up. Well, that's it, the North Boundary Trail. I have no idea how many kilometers it is. I'm gonna flash it up here on the screen for you right now because truthfully, uh, I, I haven't added it up. <laughs> and the maps were all over the place. Today was just over 26 kilometers, and uh, that's pretty much right on what Parks Canada said from Adolphus. I did it in just over six hours, which is really good pace for me. The guys are further behind. Joey loves his photography and his videography, and they know that uh, we're gonna try to hook up later. Uh, if you wanna find out what they thought of the hike, you can look at last night's video, but uh, oh man, how's the hike? Epic, absolutely epic. I loved every minute of it. Uh, came down with this cold, didn't let it get me down. Uh, Joey and Brian are awesome guys. Do check out their YouTube channels. Brian DeLay, just his name. I'm going to link it below. And I'll also link below Joey Coconato's uh, amazing uh, My Own Frontier YouTube channel. It's just both of those guys are fantastic channels, fantastic human beings, and just wonderful to hike with. So, man, it's over. The North Boundary Trail. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.